Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a small Godot video. Now, this isn't really a tutorial. It's more of like a uh, kind of like a Godot tip video, maybe. And we're going to be talking about controller input inside of Godot. And I already have this scene set up. So you can see I've got just a base world node here, and I've got a a static body that has some collisions on it. And then I made a player scene here and inside this player scene we just have a sprite and a collision and our player is a kinematic body. So pretty standard stuff here, nothing too fancy. So if you want to set this up just how I have you can um, pause your video and set it up. And then inside our player we have this code here and this is also very standard stuff. Once again, if you want to pause your video and set up um, yours to be exactly like mine here, then you can uh, in order to test this out. Otherwise, you can just kind of follow along. Um, so we've got what I'm what I'm doing here in this code. I've got a velocity. I've got an acceleration and a max speed. The acceleration is faster than the max speed because we're multiplying our acceleration by delta, but you don't have to multiply your max speed by delta because um, our, our move and slide function does that for us. So this is pretty standard um, move and slide with the velocity and then we're just adding to that velocity to um, based on some controller or based on some input we get here. And you can see if I run the game, um, we can move around in this world and slide along these edges. If we try and push through them, that's what move and slide does. Uh, I have in the debug, I have visible collision shapes to make sure you can see those. So nothing too fancy here. There is one thing that I want to point out that you should be aware of. And that is I'm using get action strength instead of is action just pressed or is action pressed? So we've got our right action minus our left action and our down action minus our up action. And both of these are get action strength and they get the different uh, vectors. Well, they get the different values for the X and Y axis in our input vector. So this input vector is going to be like an arrow that points in a different direction based off of these values right here. This isn't really a beginner tutorial, I should mention as well. If you're a beginner, uh, you should probably watch my platformer tutorial to kind of get started and get a feel for it. So we're using get action strength here, and that allows us to, number one, we don't have to worry about converting this value to an int or something because this value is going to be a float. It's going to be a decimal value that gets, um, uh, a strength will be from zero to one and then we can subtract from our, for, for example, if our right is one here and our left is one, we're pressing both right and left, then we'll get zero because one minus one is zero. So we won't move if we try and press both at the same time. And we need to use this for our controller. And I am using an Xbox One controller uh, that I just plugged in to my computer using, um, what is this, some sort of a, I don't even remember what kind of cable this is, but whatever kind of cable it uses, uh, I've just plugged it in. And so now that we've got our movement set up, we want to actually set up our controller input. So we'll want to come into, you can see I'm using UI right, UI down, or UI left, UI down, UI up. So if we come into our project settings and we come into our input map, you will see those set up right here. And it actually by default already has the D-pad set up. So um, if you use these and you use input action strength, the D-pad will work. I'm using the D-pad on my Xbox um, controller right now and the character already moves around. So that just works by default. However, the analog stick doesn't work. I don't get any movement from the analog stick. So let's add that in. We'll start with left here. We want to add a new action. We'll do joy axis, axis zero, left stick. So our left analog stick, left. And that's what we want. So we'll say add. Then we'll come into right. 
we'll do joint axis, axis left stick right, obviously, add. Then we'll do up, joint axis, and this will be axis left stick up. So axis one, left stick up. Yes, that's what we want. And then down, we will do the same thing, except we will do axis one positive, so left stick down, add that in. And now we can use the analog stick to move our character around in this scene or level. And so I know it's been a while since I've made a YouTube video, uh, and I'm trying to get back into that. We'll be getting into that soon. I've been working on the Godot course, the Kickstarter that I did, and I finally finished that up. I did have a little bit of scope creep in that, and that's part of why it took me longer. Um, and by a little bit, I mean I changed the last section in the course from a platformer section, where you just learned how to make a platformer character, into a mini Metroidvania section with a boss and stuff. So. Yeah, so maybe it wasn't a little bit of scope creep. Maybe it was a little more than that. Um, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm really happy with how the course turned out. So if you're interested in that, I'll have a link in the description and in the comments, a pinned comment. You can check it out and look at the course. The course is finished now. There may be, um, like, I might add a couple extra lectures that clean up a few bugs here and there that people run into Uh um, we've already cleaned up some of them um, because of the early access version, so that was very helpful for the people who worked worked on that with me. So, But there may be a few more, but the content is finished. The course is done as far as content-wise. However, part of that Kickstarter was a promise for a free action RPG series here on YouTube. And so I'm, I'm actually working on that right now. Uh, let me open up the project here. So I've got this started. I'm going to be using the resources from my action RPG series, uh, the Game Maker one that I did that was a course. Um, it won't be a remake of that because it's not going to have all the features that that one had. Uh, it's going to have the basics of an action RPG. Movement, collisions, hitboxes, and hurtboxes. Um, you know, so like roll, attack. Um, we'll have an enemy. It'll have all the basics, but it's not going to have everything that you would need, like saving and loading and, you know, bosses. And it's not going to have those things. It's going to have the basics. Movement, fighting, collisions, enemies, those kind of things. So this is what I have so far. Um, and you can see we've got uh, the character can move around on the screen. They animate. You can easily set up your directions. Um, there's depth. We've got depth working here. Can go behind this tree. There's collisions too, and they're kind of nice because like I set them up to be rounded collision shapes. So if you're coming up to a bush, your character will kind of move around that bush. Um, so that's nice. We've got the basics for hit boxes and hurt boxes in. We can hit these grass things. So I'm still working on this, working on the reference project. Once I'm done, I'll start recording. I'm rec I'm the progress that I'm making on this, I'm actually streaming a lot of it over on Twitch, so you can check out my Twitch if you want to follow the progress on this. And then I'll be uploading videos for it. Hopefully, I can finish it this month is going to be the plan. Try and finish it up this month, get all the videos on YouTube and stuff. So this is something to look forward to, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit simple. It's not kind of my normal style. But I didn't want to sit and type out all of this stuff for you guys, which is kind of just standard how everything works, to then explain, oh yeah, all you have to really do here is set up your device axis here in the input map and make sure you're using get action strength. Those are the two important things in order to use controller input. So, but if you want to try uh, if you want to pause the video and type this up yourself you can then do that and test it out i may i might actually have this project file in the description as well so you can download it and this is Godot 3.2 so i'm using Godot 3.2 just so you're aware but thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you all soon